Hello to my two subscribers. This is going to be a lengthy video. I'm going to be getting in depth on smokeless range and point blank simulator, going through basically everything they have to offer because there's not very much out there that shows that. So these are probably the best simulators you can get right now in terms of functionality and value for the everyday person that doesn't have that $36 million budget. But before we go Deep Space Nine in this, let me just show you why this is an amazing way to train in either simulator. This is the way to go right now. So this is a video I'm gonna show you that I took off my Instagram page where I'm gonna be running a drill on the laser simulator and then recreated it in live fire to test the results. What I did here was take the best time on the laser simulator and ran that against my first run of the drill in live fire. So that's showing a total time of 1.97 seconds, all A zone hits. Pop, 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 pop. Two alpha, two alpha. So that is awesome. Obviously it's a one-off, but it makes a point here. Um, I didn't even know it was the exact times until I got home and looked at the video, but that is an incredible feeling knowing that the work on the simulator and your results on the live fire range are going to be reasonably close in terms of time and accuracy, and that is huge for confidence in the training. So obviously I think laser simulators are worthwhile for training. I think either of these simulators, before we even get into this review, are worthwhile. I did pay for both these simulators myself because I'm an idiot. But to be completely transparent, I do have a 20% off code now as an affiliate for Point Blank Simulator for two reasons. One, because it was offered, and two, because I have a little bit more faith in the trajectory of Point Blank Simulator. That being said, I'm going to be throwing some hate and some love at both these programs with pretty decent impartiality, I think. So, I'm going to be reviewing these as a tool to get better at shooting, not as like a plinker or a fun simulator. These are actually going to be helping us work on our skills in terms of competition or defensive applications. So you're going to be seeing that perspective as we go through this. So how do we get started on these simulators? Great question. There's obviously a painful startup cost on either of these simulators, but that's softened if you already have a projector and screen and laser pistol. These are basically the cost of a gun purchase. Right? That's how I justify it to myself. You know, we don't need to buy a 26th Glock. We need to get some training, right? So, as a reference point, I'm just going to go through the equipment that I have that I'm running both these simulators on. Really not a techie guy, but uh, these are the specs of my projector, just so you have a baseline of what I'm using in comparison to what you're actually viewing on the screen here. And for reference, that projector is worth 260 Canadian dollars. And this is the sweet refurbished desktop I got to solely run the simulators on. Again, this is $300 Canadian, so you're gonna be able to get it cheaper, probably. Uh, this is the specs, and I also put a graphics card in there. As you can see, I'm not running very hardcore equipment here. I'm just trying to get these things up and running. But uh, you will see later on there is a couple frame rate issues with Point Blank Simulator. So this is what it looks like in real life. Look at that. Yeah, that's the projector and the camera on top which picks up the shots on the screen. So let's go over the cost of each program. So it just gives us a little bit of a reference as we're going through this very lengthy video. So you have three options with point length range. It's the personal range and you have to purchase basically like a user account underneath the personal, professional, or commercial which gives you access to the entire program and there's additions inside of that. So at a bare minimum, we've got the personal account selected, the competition add-on, and the $245 one-off cost in terms of the actual camera to pick up the shots. And that comes to $412 USD. Jumping over to the smokeless range, same thing here. we got to purchase that camera and the software right off the bat, which is $550. And then additionally, we're going to get the competition pack, which is $299 for IPSC. That's kind of the bare bones essentials to make this worthwhile of both programs. And that comes to $849. All right, so obviously a higher startup cost, but with smokeless, that's a one-time fee. 
So if you look at the super mathematical breakdown I've done here, you can see the startup cost is pretty similar for both. That gives you like an initial program set to play with. Um, I wouldn't say that's substantial enough to continue training with daily, uh, but it, it gets you shooting at the screen. So if you look here though, obviously Point Blank Simulator is a monthly subscription costing. It's a little bit different. So in the long run, you are going to be paying more with Point Blank Simulator, but it is cheaper to get started with if you want the full shebang right off the bat. And because I went full dumb dumb here, uh, I had to take this video down off of YouTube and add this little picture because that's not the price that I'm paying nor you would pay if you're using the code. So in all fairness, that is the price for Point Blank Simulator. My apologies. All right, look at this. There we go. We're actually starting the video now. Smokeless range. Okay. So you can see all the additions here that we've got loaded up. And right here is what you're getting with the startup pack. All right, so you're getting these 10 game drill simulator thinnies. And I'd say about half of those are pretty gimmicky, kind of useless. So getting into the calibration here, pretty intuitive. You just click the calibrate button, does the little dot dance like this, super cool. And it goes through a couple more sciencey things, and then you're calibrated. Bam! Look at that. This actually takes about a minute to do in real life, um, but I sped it up because this video is already boring enough. All right, we are four minutes in, and we are now going to shoot some things. Look at that. So we're pulling up Bomb Blast, which is rad. Look at this. Bam, 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 bam. Super cool. Uh, it actually is really useless. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a few of these games that just feel like filler content. Like very gimmicky. And again, we're reviewing this from the perspective that we're spending this a thousand bucks to get some training in, right? Um, I don't think any of us want to be spending that money to just be nostalgic over basically a glorified duck hunt that a high school kid could have made on a weekend. Are you ready? Sorry, that's super salty. I apologize. The kids used to love these games, so they're not entirely useless. This one here actually is pretty decent. Uh, you can use the timer up in the top right there to actually just run it like a regular range. So this is where you can work on your basic drills, you know, draw from the holster, double taps, reloads, all that kind of stuff, just based on the timer up in the top right corner there. But it's kind of annoying because there's no minimum delay on the timer. So if you're not close enough to your computer to click the mouse, you have to shoot that and then put your gun in the holster very, very quickly. So here you can see the immense struggle I'm having with my tiny brain. Oftentimes you'll shoot, sorry, you won't shoot, I will. Uh, I don't want to lump you guys into the dumb dumb camp too, but the sequence for me is normally shoot, reholster, forget that you haven't stopped the timer yet, so then you have to draw, stop the timer, then start the timer, then holster really, really quickly so you don't miss the buzzer going off, and then restart that whole process. A little bit of this could be solved with just a minimum delay option, but really they need what Point Blank Simulator has in terms of pressing the space bar to start or even just using the foot pedal. So you can see as I've been going through here the options for all the stages. They do allow a lot of uh, change in regards to targets, time, distance, all that kind of stuff. So that's a bonus for Smokeless. So this one's pretty lame. The only interesting thing I've found with this is the old shooting the guy in the back dilemma. You can see here the delay between processing that the target is turned red and actually stopping your finger from sending extra rounds on it. So speaking of gimmicky stages, uh, this is actually not one of those. Uh, it looks like it. This is actually one of the stages that I come back to on Smokeless quite often. It's a pretty decent drill for target transitions, reaction time, all those cool buzzwords. The speed drill one here is also pretty decent. The tracking drill, not so much. Sounds cool. In reality, pretty lame. This one here though, the transition drill. This is a little bit of a gem. So you can go through, select your target, and then click no shoot target. And I have this on two player mode so I can get extra targets in there. So the one with the X is obviously a no shoot. But there's over penetration, so if you're shooting the paper in front of it, it's going to go through and hit the no shoot. And that'll show up as a little red dot at the end of the stage where you weren't supposed to shoot. This is probably my favorite uh, drill in the startup pack. It's because you have to very mindfully place your shots on the transition. That's not something that you normally have to do uh, randomly like this. Alright, so that is your startup pack for Smokeless Range. Those 10 little drill game things. 
So this is the main event, Smokeless, the Ipsic add-on. There's 10 stages that you can shoot right now in this version. And I apologize for that notification at the top. I'm an idiot. I should have dismissed it. Stand by. So you can see it's moving along pretty quickly here. Uh, it automatically moves between target arrays. So if you got two targets, you have to shoot two rounds of two each. Um, it's going to move as soon as you hit four. So you can't take a makeup shot if you've got a bad B zone hit. It's just going to automatically move ahead. And because of that, you have a very, very fast Ipsic stage, which just is blazing from start to finish, which makes it a lot of fun, and it's very responsive, but you don't have time to check your work, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you also don't get to check it at the end of the stage, which kind of sucks, and you can't really see where you went wrong. The scoreboard, though, is awesome. It gives you an immediate feedback to how you placed in relation to your top 10 runs, and gives you something to work towards every single time you're running a stage. The only bad part is I can't see where I went wrong there. So I got my hit factor and it's showing that I have 11 misses, but I have no idea where those went. Which doesn't really assist us. Hey look, it's me. It doesn't really assist us in improving if we don't know where we screwed up, right? So this uh, stage here, I'm just showing what we can do in that gap between the arrays. Because in a normal Ipsic stage, we should be reloading between those arrays. And this gives you enough time to do that if you're really good at reloading, which I'm not. But it's probably better to keep the pressure up anyway. All right, let's transition to Point Blank Simulator. So I have this downloaded and attached as a plugin to Smokeless Range. You can also run this as a standalone simulator as well. This means that I'm still using the Smokeless Shot Detection Camera, and I can calibrate it through the Smokeless Range software, or I can also calibrate it or confirm calibration in the Point Blank Simulator. Should be noted that both these simulators work better on an infrared laser. Um, I'd suggest picking up the Cool Fire Trainer uh, recoil system, that is awesome, um, or a CERT pistol and just getting the infrared adapter. So the way the Point Blank Simulator works is that you purchase your user account, whether that's the personal, the professional, or the commercial, and each of those gives you a baseline sampling of all the different add-ons inside of Point Blank Simulator. So the static target is kind of lame. Um, it doesn't have a timer function like Smokeless, uh, but you can move it back a lot further than Smokeless and test the ballistics that they have built into to Point Blank Simulator, which is pretty cool. But other than that, it's kind of a lame addition here. The dynamic target, though, is pretty awesome. It's got a lot of features built into the options that you can set up different drills with. Uh, it's actually, uh, basically, if you look at all the Smokeless drills, the transition drill, moving drill, speed drill, tracking drill, you can do all of those just inside this dynamic target and do it a lot more efficiently. Uh, it automatically moves through the targets and gives you a time as you're shooting them and your transitions and all that. Um, the only gripe I have with it is that you can't actually save any of those scores. So it's not like you can come back the next day and check where your transitions between targets were or your draw times were. But even without that, this is just a way more functional tool than all of those drills built into Smokeless. So you can see the times displaying and then disappearing when I shoot the next target. It'd be really cool if they had some kind of a ticker along the side of the screen there. It's compiling all your times in this session. Uh, and then you can get your average for your draw times, all those kind of things. It'd be very helpful. Uh, you can also see here it's a little bit glitchy sometimes. Um, obviously, Point Blank Simulator is a little bit more of a new program than uh, Smokeless is. But there is sometimes you're going to be uh, experiencing some glitches. Not a big deal. These courses are underneath the plinking category. As you can see here on the ready screen too, it gives you options for your ammunition and your condition. So if you're running 9mm or 45, it's going to have different ballistics for the drop at that distance that you're seeing. The shooter condition doesn't change anything with the stage for the times uh, for what I'm seeing. Uh, so it's kind of irrelevant right now. You might make more of a use for it later on, but it just seems like it's a button to press. These plinking games are kind of cool, just as a demo for the program, but uh, they're not something that I keep coming back to. You can also notice with those that my computer is having a little bit of struggle at times to keep up with the program. And sometimes I can't get hits on the targets until they've completely stopped moving. So this drill is still underneath the plinking category, uh, which is pretty cool because it's uh, kind of ipsicky. And it throws these silhouette targets on a random starting point every time the timer goes off. Very cool. And you're seeing on the review stage there the immediate benefit to Point Blank Simulator showing exactly where your hits landed. 
And you'll see later on in the IPSC category that it gets even more detailed than that. This is another random plinking target array. Kind of cool because you can play with the ballistics a little bit more in these ones. Launching rounds at those far silhouettes. The big difference with Point Blank Simulator is that little arrow in the bottom left corner, sometimes the bottom right corner. Uh, what that gives you is the ability to end the stage at any time. Uh, so you decide when you move to the next target array or when you complete the stage. So in Point Blank, you choose when you're done. And in Smokeless, other than in Steel Challenge, the program decides when you're done. So you can see under the category Drills, you have Baseline, Civilian, and CTE. So I paid for the CTE add-on to my professional user account, and I received the baseline drills as well, just like you would with any of the other accounts. These drills are cool because they give you an actual metric to aim for. At the end of the drill, it's going to tell you if you know you pass or failed, and then what your level is comparatively to your score. And the review stage button. This is a huge improvement over smokeless range. Having the ability to see precisely where your hits landed on the target gives you so much more data. Being able to see exactly where I placed rounds allows me to dissect where I'm screwing up. So on a transition I can see that I'm shooting too early or I'm sweeping over the target. And if I add recoil with the cool fire trainer, I'm able to see when I'm outrunning the gun. Uh, just a quick tangent here, pairing this simulator with the cool fire trainer is absolutely the closest we can get to live fire in 2021. I think we just got to remember when we're training with dry fire and laser ranges that we can get a little bit overzealous in our outlook on our skill set if we're not putting that recoil back in from time to time. So the drills category for Point Blank Simulator is a big win for them. This actually gives you a metric to keep training against some drills that are ongoing in the shooting community and even some classic and staples like the El Presidente. For new shooters, it's nice to have these right here available for you right out of the gate. You could build these in smokeless range if you purchase the open range add-on, but it wouldn't be quite as sexy. You still don't have the review stage function and you wouldn't have the metric in terms of the top times right now. So as mentioned earlier, in point blank, when I'm done shooting my stage, I have to go down and shoot that arrow down on the bottom left, or click the foot pedal. If I've attached a foot pedal to my computer and assigned it to that left and right arrow key, as well as the space bar, then I can do all the functions of the course just with my feet. That gives you the ability to keep your gun in the holster between stages. Um, in smokeless range, you have to actually click shoot to start. So now we're into the actual competition add-on pack for Point Blank. This is the IPSC category. And surprise, it looks like an IPSC stage. Pretty cool, you blast the targets, click the arrow, or step on the arrow. You can see the hits on target here too are a lot less noticeable than smokeless range, which I think is beneficial, just helps us call our shots a little bit better. So you can see this looks a lot more realistic than smokeless range. Definitely more immersive, and the targets actually look like real life. Here we have the stage breakdown. You see there's a lot more useful data here than in smokeless. And the review stage function. My goodness, that's gorgeous. So you can see how good this looks as it's going through here. And this is an amazing function to have to see where the hits are actually landing. It also shows how much detail went into this. It's a lot more immersive. Like the targets are actually on stands. The no-shoots are on stands in front of the target. The shadows casted everywhere. It looks great. The user interface and menus on Point Blank, however, are not quite as polished as Smokeless. It doesn't look as good. And it's kind of clunky as you're moving through. It's not quite as user-friendly as Smokeless, just in terms of being straightforward. Some of the options are a little bit confusing. I think the scoreboard system is a lot better in Smokeless. Having all your scores just kind of dumped into this generic box here on the, the menu it just gets kind of lost. Um, it's certainly more useful to have your scores presented at the end of your stage, so you know right there immediately if you killed the stage or not. So these screens are actually what you get on the desktop if you go into your user account settings. You can't actually get this from the program. So you can see that is my chicken nuggets. They are done. I will be right back. So you can see there's a ridiculous amount of options here in regards to ammunition choices, user set lists, and stage preferences. These are kind of hard to find in your account settings. I didn't even know they existed until recently. 
Um, it's kind of like the old Windows versus Linux debate. Like these are here for you. It's pretty awesome to be able to have those options. It's just if you have the know-how and the time to be able to actually use them. That being said, the person that has 17 and a half minutes between work shifts probably is not going to appreciate this as much as just hopping on smokeless and getting your scores right up front. All right, moving on. This is the motion capture feature, which is pretty cool. Uh, I apologize for the fan in the background. I burnt my chicken nuggets, so I'm going to be extra negative for the rest of this review. Uh, this runs on the Kinect for the Xbox One. This is a super cool idea, uh, but for the average dummy user like me, it's just not ready yet. I spent about two hours trying to get it to calibrate. I uh, gave it an honest effort, moving the Kinect around the room a bunch of times, uh, but this is the result of that. It's just me moving around the room on this imaginary motorcycle, looking like an idiot. I did eventually get it to read the starting position. Uh, but even then, it was very finicky and just not usable. Keep in mind, this is my experience with it. Um, obviously, the Kinect runs pretty darn well with the software. You can watch videos from Point Blank Simulator running it, which is awesome. It's just for the average idiot that's going to be setting this up in their house like me. Yeah, I don't know. It's I think it's got a long ways to go. This being said, Point Blank Simulator hasn't come out and said that this is a 100% functioning option yet. It's really still in testing, uh, and they were pretty upfront with that. I've posed about 63,000 questions to both of the owners of this company in regards to setup. Um, they've been very approachable and helpful with all of the questions that I've had. Uh, it's, I can't really speak the same for Smokeless because I haven't had to ask those questions, but just knowing that the owners are approachable and listening to the users is, is huge. Again, you can see here that my computer is having a hard time keeping up with the program. I suppose that could be a lot of the issue with the Kinect here too. But it's definitely still at a usable level, even with the budget hardware. I was immeasurably disappointed here that I couldn't shoot through the windows. Here I'm running one of the baseline stages with the cool fire trainer. And in this stage, I'm just using the foot pedal to move between the arrays of targets. Here you can see a little bit of the sweet science here in terms of the ballistics and physics engine that Point Blank's running. There's not really a need for this in IPSC stages, but I can see it being more useful as the program develops. So this first stage here is going to be Point Blank Simulator, and I'm running between the foot pedals to click the arrows to move to the next target array. Looks pretty stupid, but by spreading the foot pedals, it forces you to move in and out of position, which is great training. Now this is on smokeless, where I'm basically simulating the same thing without the foot pedals. If you don't have foot pedals, or you're just feeling lazy, you can just shoot the array and then shoot the arrow to move to the next array. It just doesn't feel good. Uh, it really breaks the feel and flow of an IP6 stage. So basically how I'm doing this now is if I want a very authentic feeling training session, I've got the time for that. I'm throwing the whole belt on, I'm putting the weighted mags in, I'm doing the recoil on the cool fire trainer, and I'm running between the foot pedals for point blank range. If I'm feeling super lazy or if I just want to get the reps in, I'm just going to do it on smokeless with the automatic movement. I guess that shows how unsatisfying it is to shoot those arrows. That being said, I appreciate that they do exist, because you can run it like smokeless, however with the option of makeup shots, where you just keep the foot pedals close by. Just to advise in regards to the total time for your course of fire, it goes off your last shot on target, not when you shoot the arrow to end the stage. So this last clip here with Point Blank Simulator is their random silhouettes and then the El Presidente drill. So this is ran with the cert pistol as well as the recoil barrel. Just as one last reiteration of how authentic this looks from the first person perspective. So that is the apples to apples comparison between smokeless range and the point blank simulator in terms of a budget for budget competition for competition training simulator. So let's jump back to smokeless range with zero segue. This is the open range pack for smokeless. It's super expensive. It's entirely worthwhile. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because it would be unfair of me not to state that there is a benefit to smokeless range being that it is a more established program. It has a lot more add-ons which are garbage, but there is two that I probably would miss if I didn't have access to smokeless range. One being the open range for 400 bucks, and the other being the video simulator for 800 bucks. 
Now those are both ridiculously expensive, but Point Blank Simulator doesn't have these options. That's not to say they're not gonna get them down the road, they probably will, but if these are something that you can see yourself wanting in the future, you can only get them with smokeless right now. And if that causes you to panic, because you already had your mind made up on pulling the metaphorical trigger on one of these purchases, just download one of the free trials that both these companies offer so you can try some of those add-ons to see if they're worthwhile to you. So this is the video scenario add-on playing above right now for smokeless range. This is the $800 option, and it is pretty freaking buggy for $800 in terms of the hit detection, which is pretty inexcusable, but there's still a, quite a bit of benefit to this type of training, obviously. The way that the videos are set up is there's alternate endings that you can actually branch off of if you have a second person sitting at the keyboard. So if you're using proper de-escalation or you have some type of use of force option now, the video scenario will change based on the inputs on the keyboard, which is pretty key. And there is a ton of video scenarios built into this program. You can also create your own and build the hit detection based off your own scenario. So those are all good options to have. And it's a nice program, it's just really unpolished, unfortunately. So the open range add-on is basically the only reason I'm coming back to smokeless range now. I pretty much do all my drills in Point Blank Simulator, and then if there's some kind of niche thing that neither of the programs have, I just build it myself in open range to bring it into reality. Virtually. Virtual reality. Wow, that was dumb. Anyway, some of the extreme benefit that I've found from open range would be like creating target arrays that I've had issues with in IPSC stages. I've built some really niche uh, challenge drills, like the 3.7s drill on there. Like Those are very invaluable things to be able to do but they come at a very significant cost to be able to do that. So all said and done with those programs, you're pushing around $2,000 just for the software to get into that. So that's up to you if that's worth it or not, but I needed to mention that just so you guys know that that is out there with smokeless range. All right, let's break this down with some closing thoughts here so you guys can be a little bit less confused than I am after this 26 minute ordeal. Yeah. So, as discussed earlier, smokeless range is a buy once, cry once thing, and Point Blank Simulator obviously has a cheaper startup around $300, which is almost a third of the cost of smokeless, but you're paying monthly going on from there. So, smokeless range gives you about a billion options in terms of add-ons, and in the startup pack, there is still a little bit more variety than in Point Blank Simulator, just in terms of the pretty colors and all the targets, but you're getting a more streamlined, at its core, functional version of what you need to train with in Point Blank Simulator. I think Point Blank Simulator will have more variety in the future and will be further ahead than Smokeless Range. Due to a few factors, customer service being one of those for sure. But in the background of all that, you've got the ballistics and the analytics that still haven't even really been fully fleshed out. And when that does happen, it's gonna be so much further ahead and professional than Smokeless Range, it's, it's night and day. Both programs have about the same ease of use in terms of just clicking the power button and getting in there and shooting. But, when you start getting into the details and the analytics, you're gonna get a lot more from Point Blank Simulator if you have the time and know how to use it. Smokeless is a lot more user-friendly in that regard, where they just throw that data right at you at the front, but it's not as detailed. Which leads me to my next point here. Segway. PBS, whoa, Point Blank Simulator. Why have I not been using that acronym the entire time? I could have saved you guys like an entire minute off this video. PBS is a more authentic experience. It is probably the most authentic program you can get out there right now in terms of feel. With a recoil trainer like the Cool Fire Trainer, your belt on, your mags, the foot pedals spread across the floor, you know, you're looking at bullet holes that are the real size on the target, so you gotta call your shots. You're hitting about 80-90% of what it feels like to do live fire. What you're missing in that 20% is that little bit of extra recoil that live fire gives you. Obviously it's going to be a louder bang and probably a little bit of stress too about spending 30 cents every time you pull the trigger. That 80% though is tremendously valuable. We are one to one on the same competition gun we're going to be using, same trigger. You know, all of our transitions are obviously going to be the same. You're looking at targets that look like the IPSC targets, the stages look like IPSC stages. It's incredible. They've absolutely nailed that. On the flip side, Smokeless is still fun to run through the IPSC courses and all the standard games but it still feels a little bit more arcadey. It's a little bit more gimmicky and feels like a game. Uh, the IPSC stage with the bigger dots as you're shooting and the automatic movement kind of takes away from the feel. And this last one's kind of weird, but I gotta mention it because it's happened to me multiple times already. If your Wi-Fi sucks, or if you don't even have internet at all, you can't run PBS. 
smoke plus range runs without internet you activate your code and it's just on your computer ready to roll which means you can just throw the computer down in the basement and not have to run an internet cable down there if you don't have a Wi-Fi adapter. So that's a point to smokeless range. So come on, man, which one should I buy? Good question, nerd. Let me tell you. I've had PBS now for about four to five months. So I'm pretty new to it. And I've had smokeless range for about two and a half years. It's probably something I should have stated at the start of this video. Regardless, I find myself spending the most time on PBS, which I think is the biggest tell here along with all the reasons I stated in this 30 minute long video. Now, I do go back to smokeless range from time to time to use the open range software if I can't find a drill on PBS or smokeless. That's really the only time I'm using that. So I think that answers your question. And if not, if you have more questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.